Hello friends, and today I want to share my top tip for speeding up your OpenToon scenes, especially if you use lots of effects or use vectors, as I did last week with this scene using vector trail brushes. And that is to render out your frames to an image file and then only use that image file in your scene. Let me show you. So here's the scene from last week and it has three visible columns, the background sky and grass, the house, and the vines, with the vines being made up of lots of vector trail brushed lines. And when you have lots of vectors, you can find open tunes slowing down. So doing this can really help. So what do we do? Well, it's pretty simple. Just enable all the columns that you want rendered by clicking the preview eye button on the column header for all of the columns that you want rendered, and then open your output settings from the render menu, tell it which frames you want rendered, and if it's only one frame, then put the same number in both the start and end boxes. And if you have more frames, then just adjust these values and it'll give you an image sequence. And then choose an image format that you want to render into, and PNG works really well. And then change the name, the output location, and then press render. So here's the rendered PNG in my project's outputs folder. And now you can create a brand new scene or even a new project and scene, and then just drag in this image and work with it. And because it's just a static image, there's no vector scaling to calculate, there's not multiple columns to work together, and there's no further effect to add in. So your new scene won't be slowed down by all of that. But you don't need to create a new scene. If you want to, you can just add the image to your previous scene. And you can just drag it into your open scene, as I just did a second ago. Or you can right click on your timeline and choose load level, then browse to your image file and load that. And now if I hide all the other columns, you'll see only this image. And now you've got a couple of choices here. You can just hide the columns that made up the background so they're not rendered in the final animation. And now you're working only with your new image. Or my preference is to start your actual animation from frame two or even later and leave the early frames just for these setup images. And having the image in the same scene as your source columns gives you a big advantage. Provided you don't change the name for the rendered image, you can make changes to these columns, then enable those columns for the preview, and from the render menu, then just re-render that frame again. But that image isn't automatically updated, not until you reload it. And you can do that by right-clicking on the image, and from the replace level flyout, choose reload. And it'll load in this new rendered version. And when you're ready to render your actual animation, just render from frame two onwards. Pretty easy, don't you think? So before I give you my final tip to help you organize these columns, I'd love it if you give this video a thumbs up so it can spread to other viewers. Thank you. So one more thing you might want to do, especially if you've got multiple columns, as I have here, or are using effects with these columns, and that's to collapse the columns to a sub X sheet, or if you're using Tahoma, it's called a sub scene. And you do that by clicking and dragging along the column headers of the columns that you want to collapse, then click in this collapse button on the toolbar, or just right click and choose collapse. And that makes those three columns show as a single column on the timeline, making the timeline neater and easier to work with. And also, if you've got any effects added for them, they won't be shown in the effects schematic at this level. Not until you open the sub X sheet by selecting on the timeline and then choosing open sub X sheet. And now you can edit those drawings again. And if you look at your effects schematic, you'll see any effects that you've got in those columns. And to get back to the main timeline again, just choose close sub X sheet. And now you can continue to work on your main animation. And if you wanted to see how I created the vector brush that I use in this background, check out this video here. So that's my top tip to speed up working with complex scenes with vectors or effects. And using it will definitely speed up your workflow. So give it a go. And I'll see you next time for another tip. And that's a guarantee. <laughs>